Hey, hey, and welcome to everyone in the audience, the studio audience, and welcome to everyone tuning in online from around the world. My name is Dawn McGregor, and I'm the business lead at CWR. And my partner for this session is Mark Smith. He's the water sector director at the RSK Group. Today, we're here to shine the spotlight on a neglected but key aspect of ensuring our future water supply and trying to limit global warming to 1.5 degrees. And that is net zero emissions water utilities. There is no global net zero without us getting to net zero within the water sector. And for those of you who are unsure maybe why this is such a key area, cleaning and delivering water can be very dirty and have very high carbon emissions, especially if the grid is running on fossil fuels. And then there's the methane and nitrous oxide from wastewater and sludge treatment. And to give some context to the scale of this issue, global water utilities account for 2% of global GHG emissions. That's the same as global shipping. And if you look at water management as a whole, it's more than 10%. And that includes wastewater treatment. And as I'm sure many of you know, 80% of global wastewater isn't treated. And in the US, uh, water and wastewater utilities can account for 30 to 40% of a municipality's energy cost. So this is a sizable issue and something that we clearly need to get on top of now if we want to limit the changes and the impacts from a changing climate. Where are we? What utilities have set net zero goals? What technologies are they using? What are the challenges? Where can investors play a role? And that's what Mark and myself are going to be discussing. But we can have a little more fun with this talk show format. So we'll be chit-chatting for about 20 minutes, but then we go 20 minutes with you guys. So feel free to jump into the conversation, share your thoughts, questions, get them ready. And with that, Mark, as a water sector specialist with decades of experience um, within water, what are you seeing the conversation around net zero water and within the industry and maybe with other sectors? Okay, well, first of all, good morning. Thank you, Dawn, for asking me to come along. Um, I think you summed up very well to start. It's, the, it's a neglected area, okay? So everybody talks about net zero, um, and yet out of the tens of thousands of utilities around the world, I think there's 80, 85 have set actual yep. net zero targets, okay? So what does that tell you? Is it important? Uh, probably not in, in, the main, in the main thing. So I think... However, rather than being completely negative, <coughs> excuse me, um, some of those utilities that have set targets are leading, are, are leaders. Okay, yep. so so the UK was probably first of all the blocks. Yep, twenty thirty, right? They've set yeah. the target. Yes, so they said in twenty nineteen we're going to hit operational net zero by twenty thirty. Yep. So operational net zero is different in that it doesn't include the assets. Yes. All right. So you could say that's a good easy one to start with, right? Operational net zero. And, and then after that, we have some of the Victorian uh, in, in Australia, um, PUB in Singapore, yep. I think it's 2045. 2045. Um, and then I think there's other ones, Scotland is 2040. So anyway, it, it's, it's all at 2030 to 2040, 2045. What I haven't seen is any plans to match that ambition, or perhaps the most comprehensive plan I've seen, which is the UK one, um, is perhaps not as far ahead as it should be where we are now in 20, you know, 2023. And I might be a bit sidetracked with uh, some current issues around the sewage spills. Well, I think, like I think this is one of the problems. Is, yeah. um, is net zero core yes. for water utilities? And I think that's a genuine question to be, to, to be thought about. Is that most people, when thinking of decarbonisation, the biggest aspect of water utilities is electricity. So people talk about decarbonising the grid. And then they take, yes, we've, we've reduced our carbon. When actually they haven't. It's, it's the grid has decarbonised. Yeah. Okay. So yes, we need, to, we need to look after our own operations in the water sector. Obviously, the grids need to be de decarbonised. But then I think we need to be serious about what we are in control of. 
which is the water. Yeah, so some of the utilities, you know, in the locations with the targets that we, you've just mentioned, um, we see different approaches. Yeah. Some are looking across the operational systems, you know, looking to reduce energy intensity. Others are looking to swap to, you know, zero carbon energy sources, but that's also depending how the grid is moving in that direction. But others we see relying more on offsets. Yes. Um, and we've seen, you know, recently there's been quite a lot of news around issues with offsets. You know, what's your thought on these different approaches? So I think, I think it depends really on how serious I think the utilities are about net zero, okay? So offsets have not got the best of publicity okay. recently, and there are some very serious questions about whether or not offsetting is a genuine decarbonisation technique, okay? So we can sort of say, I'm not saying it's, I'm not dismissing it, but I don't think it's a core function. Yeah. I think equally decarbonising the grid is not a core function because that's the electricity side of things. So the bit in the middle, which is the water side of things, we need to get a lot better at the basics, and that is reducing consumption of water. Okay. So, so getting people to use less. Again, I'll talk UK here. We have, we have reduced from 145 um, litres per person per day to 120, and we achieved that 20 years ago, and that hasn't moved in the last 20 years. Now people talk about new properties having you know, less than 100, but new properties accounts for I don't know, less than 1% of, yeah. of, 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 our, of our housing stock. So where's the community engagement, I think? Second thing, leakage. Okay, so we, we spend carbon abstracting water, treating water, pumping water, and we leak it. So, so again, that's something we are in control of here. Yeah. Um, on the wastewater side, process emissions you mentioned. Okay? Yeah. Um, is this really the best way to treat wastewater going forward, and oh, sorry, aerobically, when actually what we produce is a very clean water, it's good for that, but nobody counted the emissions when they, when they developed when the process. And is that where you think one of the, the areas of innovation is needed? I think there's serious innovation needed in the short term on reducing um, the NOx emissions, um, but also CH3, the, the CH4, the methane. Yep. So fugitive gases in the sludge side of things. In the longer term, I think there's an even more interesting conversation to be had as to whether or not aerobic treatment followed by anaerobic biosolids treatment is a net zero solution okay or is it something that we need to think completely different about and look at anaerobic liquid treatments followed by perhaps something you know something like pyrolysis which is a carbon positive process yep. on the sludge side but but at the moment we have got hundreds of years of, of assets sitting in the ground around the world we've got to work with them yeah, no, no, that's a good point. And a bit to the crux to why we're here today. Um, why do you think more utilities haven't set net zero targets? I mean, you know, there's been some research done, um, you know, by Xylem that said, you know, utilities could cut emissions by 50% with existing technologies at little to no cost. Yeah. And yet, you know, we said it's 81 as of April 2022 around the world, you know, only covering 230 million people. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a huge gap that we need to get to fill. And just to, before I pick that one yeah. up, water consumption is rising. Yes. As temperatures rise, I think the PUB expect in Singapore water consumption to double in the next Yes, years. by 2060, okay. yeah. So, so we've got to get to grips with this. Why is it? It's difficult. You know, we have got, you know, trillions of, of dollars of assets invested in pumps, pipes, concrete. Um, it's not easy to just say, let's turn that around. That's yeah. the first thing. The second thing is water sector is, is a public health sector primarily. That's where it comes from. So <clears throat> you mentioned that a lot of people still don't have access to clean drinking water, still don't have access to, to, to sanitation. Well, I would argue that you should solve those problems in a, in a very carbon negative way, first of all. Right? Okay? Yeah. So, so we can't impose carbon zero on those, those solutions. I think then the next thing is how, how do you go beyond that and say, Okay, so is it the water sector's role to drive net zero, or is it the water sector's role to follow? The water sector is always followed. It but is it not couldn't it be time to lead? It could be. It could be, but it is expensive, and I think there's a, a, there's a few home truths here. We are not going to do this for the same cost as what it is today. Yeah, that's the, the investment that is needed is, is 
Multiple billion. Well, I mean, for the UK, you know, to reach yeah. um, the 2030 target, they said they need two to three billion pounds two to three billion, yeah. of, of capex. Correct. Um, and most of that is predicated upon the grid. On the grid as well. But I mean, the savings could be 10 million tons of, of GHG gases. Okay. So this is where I think also a conversation that doesn't happen. You know, we're talking water and energy, and, yeah. and that's, you know, the water energy nexus is a big topic. But to really put water right next to carbon in discussions, mm -hmm. and that will help, I think, maybe not water able to lead in net zero, mm -hmm. but be more active in that discussion. And then to get the investor community involved, right? Because they're looking for a green investment, or if you want to go blue, blue investment, mm -hmm. right? And this could be an area they do that. Yes. So I think what you're talking about there is something that's really interesting. I think climate change at the moment, we talk in terms of, I call it almost like weather porn, okay? So how, <laughs> how, bad, how bad is okay. it? Okay, so it's boiling or it's flooded or more people die here or, you know, in Europe it's, it's freezing cold and the south of Europe it's, yeah. it's you, know, no, you know, all that stuff. And in, in England, you know, where, where I live, we had extreme reactions to last year's drought, Okay. And I used to get a phone call every week to go on the radio and explain why or whatever. The minute it started raining, the press lost interest. And it hasn't stopped raining, okay? So now we've lots of water. Right? Back to normal English it's weather. Back, back, and, and that's it, right? And I don't think, I, I think that, that to my mind, we need to understand that people will experience climate change mostly through their interaction with water. Oh, yes. So, yes, some parts of the earth will be, may become uninhabitable due to temperatures. Anywhere is uninhabitable if they don't have water. Okay, doesn't matter what the temperature is. So, so I think people don't understand carbon, but they do understand water. So I think it would be really interesting to start having that discussion about climate change in relation to people's understanding and reaction and interactions with water. I think that could be definitely a way to like get global community conversations more happening. So you can't reduce water consumption. You can't, you can't impose, well, you could, I suppose, impose water reduction on some people they did in Cape Town, okay? Yeah. But that's really in extremis, right, when you're running out of water. We want people to reduce the water consumption. We want people to reduce their electricity consumption. So to circle back to net zero water utilities, mm -hmm. How does that work for them then? If they're going to be, I mean, we've said that group of 81, they're the leaders, right? But we need to get all of the other thousands moving towards net zero. Mm -hmm. And I think something, you'll know more about this, but I mean, uh, there just doesn't seem a clear roadmap at the moment. I, I don't think there is a roadmap. Yeah. I, I think there are roadmaps and there are some really interesting uh, pieces out there from, from different uh, consultants or from think tanks or from, from utilities. I would recommend you go and have a look at the Water UK one, which is the UK journey to, to, to net zero by 2030. Um, Xylem have done some interesting stuff. Uh, and, you know, you could list all that. So it's all there, but there's no roadmap. Yeah. There's no UN level. So is that something that we need? Um, I think it's something that we need if it's financed. Okay. I think otherwise we're in danger of everybody convincing that it will happen somehow, a bit like the 1.5 degrees, yeah. okay? Which, um, I'm not saying that ship has sailed, but it's, you know, it's, it's, getting, close. it's getting close to sailing <laughs> at this point. Yeah. Um, so are we still sticking on 2030, 2040, 2050? Um, does it matter? If it doesn't, what happens? And I think it's that sort of conversation that needs to be had. And if the whole conversation is predicated around tweaking or existing assets, I'm afraid I, I don't see I don't see that as being radical enough to get to where we want to go to, to get to. And so how do we get some more radical ideas going? You know, how do we build this conversation and momentum within the water sector, but also more broadly? So so again, not not going down the sort of doom and gloom route, there are some really interesting innovation innovative uh, competitions. PUB again have done one, yep. the Nen Zero. There's a, a lot of research going on in, in the UK. Um, through UQWR, uh, the UK Water Industry Research Group. Um, and as, as you go around the world, you see, again, WERF in, in North America is focusing on it. Uh, there's a lot of work in it. But it seems to me to be piecemeal. And, and I guess the way historically we've, we've gone is you have got the Western countries or the more developed nations have sort of gone the next step and then sort of that technology has gone out and about. But actually, I think there's, we, we need to 
go hard on that. That won't happen in the next five to ten years. If we want it to happen in the next five to ten to fifteen years, we need to make some clear statements along the lines of, for instance, electric vehicle usage. You know, we mm -hmm. we, we, we have got tens of thousands of diesel vans. Yeah. In what utilities? Oh yeah. Well, I mean, some of the utilities are going to that level. I mean, the Victorian yeah. utilities in Australia, they, they they are looking pretty comprehensively at the correct. So that getting that, to net zero. But that's easy, isn't it? You yeah. know, we should do that. You know, again, I would go back, stick to your knitting, fix the leaks, engage with the communities, reduce the water consumption, bring in digital water systems. You know, there are lots of uh, different technologies that are there to reduce and to help people reduce their their own consumptions. Be more efficient in the use of your electricity. Turn off the lights at night. You know all these things. These are these are not difficult. The bit that is then the next the next step beyond that then, because in parallel to that I see the decarbonisation of the grid happening. Yeah. The next step then I think is the really difficult bit. Where's the global fund to solve process emissions? Yes. Where's the global fund to source to solve sludge carbon emissions from being put on agricultural land? I think this is where the water community, even though I mean, I've been coming to Stockholm Water Week now for a time, it's about 10 years ago, and they are you know, seeing some, some, some changes in the community engaging with other sectors. Um, but I think it's something that the water sector can still do more of, right? Like when we're talking decarb, when we're talking net zero, we should also be talking a lot more with the energy sector, right? And also talking with city, city planners, what's happening with the grid. Then, like I've mentioned a bit earlier, but the, the investors, right, they're looking for opportunities offset or for green investments, blue investments. And I mean, if you look in China, you can imagine the size of China, you know, and so it, just for 2020, uh, the energy use to supply water, su uh, for water supply was about 40 million tons of carbon dioxide equivalent. Okay. And that's just in one year. So you can imagine reducing that and then the abatements there and the opportunities there, but we just don't seem to be kind of connecting these other dots, like the, the, the broader conversations, the unobvious conversations. Mm -hmm. And I think as well, for instance, take China, you know, solar in China is, is, is booming. You know, people talk about coal. But oh, no, the, the, the energy, re renewable energy in China is huge. It's massive. It's huge, yeah. yeah. Um, and I just think we, have, we slice and dice this to local utility. Um, I would say there's serious political leadership lacking. Mm -hmm. um, I live in the UK. You know, we're doing our level best at the moment to tear it all up, um, <laughs> which for whatever reason, you know, I, I don't do politics, but, um, but it, you know, we, we need leadership to say net zero is as important as clean water or clean rivers. Yes. And, until and we that's have within that, water, but also more broadly, right? Correct, yeah. I mean, like, I think everything, no matter what you do, nobody will hit net zero without a decarbonised grid. It, it just won't happen. Yeah. So... Mindful, we're, we're kind of coming up to time here. Mm -hmm. um, what would be some of your key takeaways? Okay. Um, really simple, and, and what would be the next steps? And if you have a call to action to the water community, <laughs> or any community. <laughs> I'm not sure about a call to action. Um, I, I think I would like honesty in the conversation. Hmm. I think I would like the big international conferences like this one to start really focusing on net zero. Start focusing and bringing it right to the front of the conversation. I would like to see water being part of that conversation. Water is ubiquitous. Nobody can live, it's like oxygen. The problem with being ubiquitous is everybody assumes it will always be there. Yes. Okay, until it's not. And when it's not, it's a catastrophe. So, so I think we got to get to the point where actually we are, we as a community are pushing our way in and saying we're important. You know, there was a UN water conference last um Yep, last in New January. York. Yep. Um, great. I didn't see much come out of it. I read nothing about it in the press. You know, it's 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 still a tiny little piece. You started by saying net zero is in eighty eighty utilities. Every utility must should have one. Yep. Should have a road to net zero. If it's as important as clean waters and clean rivers. And if it's so, not, yeah. Okay. Well, we're trying to say it should be, right? We're trying oh, to say, yes. you know, get that water right next to carbon on the global climate right. agenda. Sure. And I'm just trying to, you know, with what you've said, it's some key messages, see what we can synthesize mm. quickly, right? Um, and open up to... to so measure audience. it. I think the first step, if, if there's a call to action, let's measure our emissions. Okay. If you don't measure it, you cannot manage it. And do we need 
I mean, you've mentioned maybe the UN as being a leader here, but you know, there's a lot of development issues, and, and there's the, you know the development banks as well, kind of starting to touch on on issues mm -hmm. around this. But do we need some new organisation? Do we need some who who could be leading this? Well, my 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 organisation RSK sits underneath and is driven by the UN SDGs. Okay. So I don't see any other any other body really that has the the moral authority say to say this is important. I would like to see the UN put water up there right next to, to carbon and okay. try to start making that politically imperative. I would like to see better leadership from the West, I think, because I think that's where a lot of the, the, the poor leadership comes from, place you can hear them talking about. Um, and I think the innovation will follow. But let's be realistic about timescales. Okay. You know, because if you think we are going to be net zero as a sector by 2040, mm. I think that'll be difficult, if okay. I'm honest. But I am confident. <laughs> <laughs> you are confident? But I am optimistic. Just optimistically confident. I am optimistic, yeah. All right, I'll put myself there with you, optimistically confident. Okay. And hopefully sessions like this, and you know, I mean, this is a, the first World Water Week. There, there are multiple sessions actually on net zero um, for the water and wastewater industry, so that's mm -hmm. good to see, but more conversations, faster, and a clear roadmap. Correct, and innovation is important. But we can't depend on technologies that don't yet exist. Yeah. And assume somebody else will invent them. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Mark. I Bye. think that's our time for, for the online session. Thank you for joining us online. Um, and now we open up to the studio audience.